All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Cultish entering the Kingdom of the Colts. My name is Jeremiah Roberts. I'm one of the co-hosts here. I'm here, as always, with Andrew, the super sleuth of the show. How are you doing, my fellow sleuth? Hey, I'm doing great, man, and I'm extremely excited for this episode because the person we're interviewing is actually one of our brothers that goes to our church. Yes. Amen. God is good. Amen. His providence is amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. No, absolutely. And so, Oscar, uh, we you would talk with me a couple weeks ago. And you just shared with me a little bit about your uh, background. You were in the Hebrew Israelites for 10 years, yep. uh, de very committed follower, devotee, mm. uh, all of the above. And I remember we had lunch and just to kind of get a little bit in depth. And I was like, man, we, we, we just got to get you on to just kind of really unload, share your heart because you got a lot to unravel. Yeah. So, man, it's a pleasure to have you on. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited to be on. Uh, I've been uh, looking forward to the opportunity and, mm -hmm. and, and I really thought... Um, for some time that the Lord would use my testimony uh, in order to shed some light on, you know, on this false gospel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's really important and uh, I'm happy to be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah, def definitely, man. So maybe we could start because, I mean, a lot of people have had perceptions of mm -hmm. the Hebrew Israelites. Typically, you'll see like my my first time I heard about them, I think it was just some video footage. And there you have usually several men who are usually lined up. They, they're kind of they've got one or two Bibles are kind of sharing a back and forth with each other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're talking as one who did that. Absolutely. Right? absolutely. And mm -hmm. usually sometimes they have almost like a rug set out mm -hmm. and they have usually but on it, they have just a lot of what they're trying to propagate as yeah. far as what they believe about who the true Israel is, right. all that sort of stuff. And right. so I've, been, I've always just been fascinated just because it seems to me that it's just something that has really exploded Absolutely. almost in the last, really the last decade or so. Yeah. Um, in fact, we're here in Phoenix and I remember uh, Amari Stoudemire who used to play for the Phoenix Suns. Right. He now is, from my understanding, he's a dedicated Hebrew Israelite as well too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, maybe we could start just from the very beginning of when it started. So yeah, you are, so you're 28 now. Mm -hmm. So you're, you went in when you were 18. Right? Yeah. So it was almost 10 years. It was about eight and a half years. Okay. Okay. Yep. So, so at 18, um, at 18, I, my uncle had shared a DVD with me that he had got from another uncle that got it from like a, like a, some kind of parade. I guess they were mm -hmm. out there passing out DVDs and, uh, it was really intriguing to him. It kind of fit some of the thoughts that he had already had some some kind of preconceived notions yeah. um about um uh, what I think what happens is black people because they feel disenfranchised and they feel mm. this kind of burden of of this history of slavery and things in this country civil rights movement mm -hmm. yeah. the 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 response to that is to uh look at themselves and see what is special about them and, mm. and find some type of identity in something that kind of corresponds with a you know a higher level of of uh, their view for themselves, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. So that's why things like Black Hebrew Israelites and things like uh, Black Muslims, that's why it attracts so much of of these people in these kind of positions. So it was the same for me. Um, I was going to church when I was younger and uh, wasn't very, I was intrigued by the Bible, but my family wasn't really churchgoers per se. Uh, we went, but it kind of stopped on Sunday when we <clears> left. Right. And um, so when this came to me, when my uncle brought it to me, it just kind of fit, it nudged right in with some of the things that I was already thinking about and answered right. some questions that I already had. Yeah. So you also mentioned too, when we had lunch that you grew up in a single parent household right. and that was, and it was your mom right. who raised you. So right. in many ways you had, you had talked about how there is almost sort of this father hunger mm -hmm. that really played a huge role Absolutely. in getting into the Hebrew Israelites. Can you talk about that? Yeah, it's, uh, I think it goes back to identity. You know, you look at your father to kind of tell you who you are and right, look at him and, and kind of draw your identity from who he is. Mm -hmm. uh, and when that's lacking, um, you, you tend to look elsewhere. Yeah. Um, and not feeling uh, an identity per se in the Bible, um, just not having a proper understanding of the gospel. Um, that's when this thing was able to come and sweep me off my feet and right, give me place, give me purpose, give me an identity. And uh, it kind of, like I said, it just fit in right where there was a void. It fit that void, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, gave me that identity. And, and therefore, f I felt like it gave me a purpose. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. What would you say then uh, when you, as you're getting into it, the was there a level? It was initially just the camaraderie of everyone giving yourself that unique sense of identity mm. and sort of the camaraderie and the brotherhood that 
is there, is there, but as far as how did it work as far as just wanting that, but also starting to get the, their understandings and, and their beliefs essentially being discipled in right. the way of the Hebrew Israelites and getting a lot of the scriptures that we'll talk about is right. something that you might have read those previously, maybe growing up in church or hearing those in passing, right. but you started reading those in a very different light. Can you From talk a about totally that? Totally different lens. Yes. Absolutely. So coming into it, uh, like I said, I, I first became privy to the teachings through DVDs, right? And that's a lot of how their proselytizing works. Uh, it's through, it's through. One thing I'll say is all the videos that I've watched from you guys, cults, they pros they, they, they evangelize hard. Yeah. Right. Um, and so that's the same thing with the black Hebrew Israelites. They're, they're out on the street. They're, they're calling people, uh, to, to this false gospel. And, um, so getting these DVDs, that was for a long time. That was my only means of hearing the teachers teaching. I'm sorry. Um, was receiving DVDs. There was no actual congregation for a long time. I would say about half of my time, I would say about four years, there was no congregating at all. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know where anyone was at. I didn't know how to congregate, right? There was DVDs. And during this time, Juice CC was yeah. setting up in all these various cities, elders, based on people that go through their uh, uh, Hebrew Bible Academy. Mm. And, you know, they, they correspond with these people and they raise up elders, right? In all these various different cities. So at the time I was in Michigan, the time that I came to this knowledge and to this, this theology, that's when they were actually setting up that church there. So the elder in Detroit, we've been in it. We were in it for the same amount of time. Right. He was getting lifted up at that same time. There was no congregation. Yeah. You know what's funny too is that you think about how fast technology is evolving. Mm -hmm. So even just ten years ago, the fact is DVDs being right. handed out. Right. It's right. Like right. Anyone who's who's a Gen Z or very younger, yeah. like who have their iPhone, like what? Right. You just hand out DVDs. Yeah. Like really? There was no YouTube or anything. They right. weren't using YouTube or anything at that point. Yeah. Eventually they were, but it was very before that it was cassettes. You know, right. Passing them out. You know. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is what's also fascinating, Andrew. Any questions you have, you can also jump in as well too. But when it, you're talking about GCC, so this is a this is the branch of the Hebrew Israelites that you you really got into. Right. Uh, once that accumulated, it went from watching these DVDs to eventually right. getting into this. Would they call it a fellowship, or what do they what do they call their churches? GCC stands for Gathering of Christ Church. Okay. Um, but typically, like the 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 term that most of the Hebrews use are camps. Mm -hmm. So GOCC would be one camp, ISUBK would be another camp, IUIC would be another camp. Um, they don't typically use church, though, even though it's in their title. That's, they don't typically use that. Mm -hmm. So they would usually say a camp or organization. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So where, so like, where did it all begin? I mean, so I mean, you, you got into this. Well, let me ask you this. So this is one of the many, many branches. Many. So maybe you could explain to like what what's some of the reasons why there's so many different score it's why there's different so many different sects or scores of right. different we well, might call them like denominations or right. not even that just people who believe they have the fullness right. of the truth and they all think that right. they have the truth this right. is the home yeah of the talk truth, about right? that first okay um so like I like I was saying earlier before we started recording there is this goes back to like late 18th century uh, people teaching you know African slaves mm -hmm. looking in the Bible and, and corresponding their own experiences with that of uh, Israel, right? Um, now, from that time, you have you have a lot of different people that kind of that kind of build on the same theology. But present day, it comes down to a guy named Wentworth Arthur Matthew. He starts the uh, a group called the um, Commandment Keepers in 1919, right? And the guy that is the father of ISUBK who starts ISUBK, which all of these groups branch from ISUBK. Mm -hmm. He leaves the Commandment Keepers and he starts ISUBK in 1969. So initially he says 1919. 1919 is, Commandment Keepers? Yeah. What, what state was that? Did that originate in the United States yes. in 1919? This guy was uh, from the West Indies, but he uh, was an uh, immigrant to, he lived in New York. Yeah, mm. yeah. New York City, which is also a reason why you see it explode so much because right. there's so many people there. Yeah. Um, yep. So New York City, he starts this in 1919 and then. Um, they are also very mm, uh, a lot closer to Orthodox Judaism, right? There's no, uh, they don't believe in Christ. They don't believe in Christ as Messiah. So uh, when this thing gets started, there, Christ is not a part of it. Mm -hmm. right? Christ gets added later, right? Okay. Um, so then you get to, from Wentworth Arthur Matthew, you get to a guy named Abba Bivens, and Abba Bivens is who is considered the father of this present day Black Hebrews like theology. I used to became in 1969. 
And from that point on, he appoints seven elders. And these seven elders, eventually they start to uh, consider themselves to be um, reincarnated figures hmm. of the Bible. I'm King David, I'm King Solomon, I'm Peter, oh, wow. I'm Paul. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's where a lot of those divisions start. So so what are some of the basic uh, assumptions then, uh, like the foundation of the Black Hebrew Israelites, if we go from 1919 to 1969? Like mm. just uh, so if there, for listeners who aren't, uh, you know, well versed with what they believe, like right. what are the foundation assumptions that they hold? Okay. Um, foundationally, what, what almost all of them would agree on is that Blacks... Um, Latinos and Native Americans are true descendants of Israel. Okay. You know, uh, Israel that has been dispersed throughout the four corners of the earth, and you see a lot of that spoken above in the scripture, and they point to that saying that that is us, Okay. right? Um, transatlantic slave trade is something that takes place starting around the 15th, 16th uh, century, and they would say that these Africans that are taken from the Ivory Coast, right, are, are, are from a, a community of people that migrated there from the time of 70 AD. So 70 AD happens, all of these Israelites disperse into Africa, okay. this is their belief, and they end up in the Ivory Coast. And there's a distinction, there's a very sharp distinction between Africans who they consider to be Hamites and Israelites or mm. black people mm -hmm. um, who they consider to obviously be from Shem, right? They make, the, that is not to be confused. A lot of groups, say, they point to Africans and they say, they don't like them because they, they believe that those are some of the people that uh, propagated their, their slavery, you know, mm. that sold them into slavery as warring uh, tribes. So I would say that that's really the fundamental belief is blacks, um, Latinos, and Native Americans are true Israelites. Okay. Right? And all those promises in scripture pertain to them individually. Right? Wow. Yeah. So, so upon the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD in the temple, and they were dispersed out, and that's right. how they, okay. Right. Interesting. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 And so from there, and that, this would also explain a lot too, when they, when they go into, uh, the, in Deuteronomy, so in Deuteronomy, when they talk about, is, is it Deuteronomy 32? You're talking about when we were having lunch, it was the- Deuteronomy 28. 28. 28. 28. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And this is where, th this is where they believe about the, it was a, uh, a migration of, mm -hmm. of slaves. Can you, can you talk about that? Cause this is, mm -hmm. this is one of those things too, that I, when you're just, sharing this with me this is the first time i've ever seen it through that lens right and this is just something and really whatever cult that you're dealing with there always is a language barrier right. so if you are going about your merry day and there's a group uh out, i remember being like i, said, I remember being out in michigan for uh, my friend elliot's wedding and walking by and looking outside a window at a restaurant there they were doing their thing right. you know hand that bible back and forth yeah you go up to the, uh, someone like that they are going to be viewing uh Bible, any sort of Bible passages that you would normally read in a typical light, they read it very, very differently. Totally different interpretations. Yeah. Right? Using the same Bible, though. For sure. Right. Um, and, and just to point to that really quick, what they do, and obviously we know it's proof texting, but they point to Isaiah 28 and 11, and they say the Bible is to be interpreted, uh, what does it says, um, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of the way that they use the Bible. They jump around. And we know that there's parallel texts that we can use to, right. you know, give foundation to certain doctrines, right? But the way that they use it, it's not within context of the entirety of Scripture, mm -hmm. right? So they point to these few texts here, and they build a whole doctrine on it without consenting to the, you know, the whole, the whole work of Scripture. So, um, speaking about Deuteronomy 28, Deuteronomy 28 is, I would say, it, it their their theology hinges upon this, hinges upon Deuteronomy 28 because they would say. Okay, we know in Scripture Israelites break the covenant, right? Which is kind of weird because they're acting as if there's still that same covenant. But mm -hmm. they break this covenant, and the curses for breaking the covenant are listed in Deuteronomy 28. So what they would say is you look at the curses and look at who the curses apply to in the world, and that's how you find out who the Israelites are. Mm. So they go through all of these curses, um, and there's many of them, but the, the biggest one will be 28 and 68 when it says you will be sent into Egypt again with ships. Mm -hmm. And so they would say Egypt is the land of bondage. It doesn't actually mean Egypt, right? It's a figurative, it's a figurative mm -hmm. name, mm -hmm. and that actually means America. Um, black people are sent into America, which is Egypt, the land of bondage, in ships. Mm -hmm. right? 
So that's what that's kind of how they believe. That. Wow. I mean, if you talk about history, is there a reason why they focus in on on just America? Because when you look at just the history of colonialism, mm. I mean, you you see slavery worldwide. I mean, you right. have a Christian William Wilberforce who was very adamant, spoken out against the slave trade, even, right. and that's something that's totally outside of the United States. Right. Is it what's the reason for the focus in on America? Is that is that just because it started here in the United States it's, in the 1920s? Is that sort of that's one of them. Um, they don't only focus on America. They would they would point to South America as well, the New World. Right. They mm. would really uh, point to, okay. but not to say that there aren't people that that go into um, Europe and other places like that. They'll look and they'll look at even some um, like one of the tribes that they believe Naphtali is Hawaiians and Samoans. Mm. You know, people from New Zealand. So it's not just there, but that's where it starts. So that's where most of the focus is. But they'll look at people from all corners of the earth and say that these people are Israelites. Um, indigenous people from Australia, you know, they'll say that those are Israelites as well. Interesting, interesting question that I'm just thinking in my head uh, right now is how how do they account for then, uh, let's say, the destruction of the Temple in Jerusalem 70 AD? Then there's a dispersion that happens. Mm. Well, what about history, where you know th th there would have to be a gap, like maybe the gospel was lost or, or something was lost right. uh, throughout this 1800 years, all of a sudden until let's say the 18th century in and then into 1919 how do they account for that history right then, so, that, that missing piece i got you yeah when they go into africa right they would say that though they fell away they fell away from serving the lord properly right and and that we see in the curse or they believe that 70 ad is a curse upon them mm -hmm. right and that they fell away into idol worship right and that basically they lost their identity through that falling away into idol worship so that by the time they come to America, they no longer b remember who they are, right? And then you add slavery onto that and there's totally wiping away um, their identity, right? So I believe it's Psalm chapter, the Psalm chapter, it may be, I can't remember what the chapter, but um, it says, let us blot them off from being a nation so that the name of Israel may be no more. And so basically they would believe okay. that the whole world is under this conspiracy to hide the identity of Israel from Israelites. See, see, this, see, this is what I find really interesting too. And I think about like uh, flat earthers. Mm -hmm. um, like I, I feel I, li listening to some of the the things that I hear, you know, from the Black Hebrew Israelites, it's almost like the flat Earth of a a, a Christian cult right. in the sense. I know right. a lot of flat earthers as well would claim to be Christians, but right. in terms of like history and that mm -hmm. there's a grand conspiracy against Absolutely. them, it's very similar. You yeah. have to like unlearn mm -hmm. everything right. in order yeah. to, to fit into the... Right. And it seems to me they also, they make a, a distinction that, and, and this is this is a, what we're leading to is that eventually there's a dialogue between uh, James White uh, a couple of years ago took place in the dividing line between him and just tell me his name again. Recall. 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 Yes. Yeah. So there was a conversation between them and I noticed in that dialogue and that conversation is that there seems to be almost this distinction or dualism between the real the real Israelites and the history that's there, but also this pagan this pagan Christianity that's derived from the white man uh, that's all derived from pagan sources. And so in many ways, a lot of the typical claims and conspiracies or just sort of pseudo history that mm -hmm. even you see people that the new like new at the new age refer to they appeal to that so right. the idea that we you know we got all our idea our ideas from nimrod right, and, right, right, right. and or and then you know talking about how easter's pagan christmas is pagan right. a lot it's just i found it fascinating that he was making those similar appeals yeah so. yeah it's uh it's can very it's very conspiratorial you know um in in the view of history if, if you notice during that debate uh, uh, Pastor James kept saying, okay, you need to give me sources. Yeah. Yes. Right? There are no sources though, right? They'll find a couple books here and there. And then when he brought these books up, Pastor James was like, man, these aren't, these aren't respected anywhere. No scholars look at these books as something that's respected. Uh, one of them was the 13th tribe. Um, and he's like, no one considers that book to mm -hmm. have any type of authority on the topic. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they go, there's another book that he mentioned called the Illuminati two. Um, just some really, some books that are really out there. Yeah. Right. And they'll find these books and again, they'll hinge doctrine on this stuff. Okay. Right? But it's really finding stuff in that stuff that already corresponds to what they believe. Right. They have a, they have a belief system. They have all of these preconceived notions, these presuppositions, and they go and they look for stuff to correspond to it. Mm -hmm. No, that definitely makes sense. In fact, um, this is what I was curious about as well too, when it comes to like how they view 
uh, ancient languages. And this is a, a distinction that was made. Just you know, again, we're we're kind of just giving a very broad mm-hmm. overview because there's so many areas that you can go you in very deep and into. then 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 zoom out. We're trying to just get a brief overview. So a lot of cults as well too. There's sort of this. Uh, almost this dogmatic we have to adhere to the king james uh version it's only so interesting to me and how so many of them are like that yeah, yeah yeah and so that's just and it's my experience so even when i saw this I'm like oh it's another one another, right, right. another group that's another right. king james right. and I, I don't like reading it like, you know, occasionally it's right. just it's got some language that's very different from right. how i talk it's very so, poetic yeah right. it's very it's very poetic you know and very sh- sh- shakespearean i guess yeah, yeah, yeah. that you'd as you'd say but <laughs> It, what's the distinct like what's the appeal to that because it, it seems to me that there would be because when you talk about like one is apostolic and the one is pentecostals mm. at least they try on some level to go to the greek <laughs> it, right or they're right. trying to explain their modalistic views and they they have a backwards where they go to the new testament and then take what's in the new mm. back to the old right. but at least they're going to the they're trying to make an argument from the original sources from the original languages mm. in the greek but with this it seems to me like why why are they appealing to something written all these hundreds of years later versus right. the original source, if or even Hebrew since they are the true Hebrew Israelites. Right, right. There's two points that I yeah. that I'll say on that. One is they believe King James is a black man, and they believe King James commissioned the translation uh, from the Greek and the Hebrew in order to give the Bible to true Hebrew Israelites, and so that's their affinity. One part of yeah. their affinity for the King James is that he's a black man. We're going to read the one that he gave to us. Mm-hmm. If you heard during that debate, he kept saying, this is our Bible. These are our scriptures. Right. Right. They, they, they lay claim to it and they say, he's the one that gave it to us. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, the other thing is when it comes down to language, they, they'll go into the language um, a little bit, but it's, it's not any type of in-depth study um, that's going to, yeah. to bring clarity. Um, I would say uh, the way that they view the King James is, is the closest thing to the original language and that's why they subscribe to that, you know. And then when you start getting into other versions, NIV, ESV, they'll say that these are versions that were uh, translated by people who were trying to hide the truth for them. Mm-hmm. Everything is conspiratorial, you know. Okay, so so for um group the the camp like uh it's, it's GOCC, mm-hmm. um for them there there's there's a term I'd like for you to address in terms of non Masonic mm-hmm. and Masonic. I know you spoke about it a little bit earlier. Right. Uh, in terms of GOCC, I know listening to that debate and he was talking. Uh, that man was talking about how King James was a, a black man. I know right. there's other camps that don't hold to that view at all. Right. So, but there, but the mainly the difference comes between being non Masonic and Masonic. Can you explain that real quick and then right. and then explain what G- GOCC does with Jesus, who Jesus is specifically in yeah. relation to. Um, the Godhead. Absolutely. Cool. Okay, so Masonic and non Masonic is really comes down to the ones who are non Masonic are a lot closer to Orthodox Jewish faith and they and they handle the scriptures in a lot of the same way. They just believe that they are a part of these chosen people. But outside of that I would say they deal with it in a lot of the same way. Mm-hmm. Um the Masonic ones, uh, which G O C C was Masonic, they uh interpret it they interpret scripture but they lean heavily on the Old Testament to give to give light to what the Old Testament is saying. I mean, the New Testament is saying, right. right? Instead of how we look at the New Testament and we interpret it from there, the Old Testament, they they would do the opposite. They, they read Deuteronomy 28 into the New Testament. Absolutely. Okay, yeah, Absolutely. keep going, keep going. Right. Um, and so as far as the figure of Christ, they would reject the Trinity. They would reject the Immaculate uh, Conception, Virgin Birth. Um, they would reject Christ's uh, divinity altogether, right? And I would say it's, it's like... Um, Henotheistic. It's like God the Father, okay, and then Christ and the Holy Spirit under Him. So they're lesser, lesser, right? Right. So uh, I, I don't know if you remember the word that he kept using was Allahayim, which is Elohim, and that's the language that they use. That the, the variant of Hebrew they would say Allahayim, right? And they would say that Christ is a power or Christ is a yeah. God, but not the God, mm. right? And therefore He is not to be worshipped, right? That would be wicked, and in, in, from their perspective, mm-hmm. right? So. Pastor Jay points him to Revelation chapter five when all all creation is worshiping Christ, and yeah. he's like, "Yeah, that's not really worship, though. They're really worshiping the Father. You know, the yeah. Son is just with him, mm. kind of thing." Or you point to Thomas, you know, calling him, you know, uh, uh, "My God." You know, they 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 reject all of that. Thomas yeah. was scared, right? He was giving, he was <laughs> cursing, right? Exactly, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Right. Yeah. So when they when they, so they view Jesus and they they see they saw they see Jesus as as a black man as well too, mm. 
and this is what I'm curious about too. Is and also they mentioned like King James. Are there are there other prominent figures in church history? I mean, typically, in their worldview, they would see anything that would be against their ideology as a conspiracy made up by by the white man to suppress the truth of who the real Israelites were. Right. Are there any other prominent figures? Do they believe that about the Apostle Paul or all the prominent figures? All the prominent all figures. All biblical prophets, all apostles, all of these people are black people. What all about any other church fathers like Augustine, Martin Luther? <laughs> they don't even, they don't deal with that. They right? don't, so, okay. so they totally, and I think I see this in a lot of cults, especially ones that subscribe to any uh, type of biblical uh, foundation. They, they separate from any type of authoritative teaching that comes before them so that they can have the last word in interpretation. See, if you start referencing guys like Augustine, right, and Ignatius, you start going to these early church fathers, what you're going to have is people that are correcting your theology. Right. Right. Uh, I was listening to uh, uh, to I think it was uh, Paul Washer and he was talking about when he's interpreting a text. He's like, I go through all of the commentaries. I go through all the early church fathers and I see what they say about these texts. Mm -hmm. And if I'm the one that's wrong, then I'm sticking out like a sore thumb. <laughs> right. Then I'm probably not right about this. All of these right. guys are, you know. Yeah. They totally get away from any like that. So there's no authority over them in the way that they interpret scripture. They have the last word. It's special mm -hmm. revelation. You know, yeah, so. well, and, and to think like in their argument, Jerry, they'd say, well, after 70 AD, it's like there was there was judgment that occurred and right. there were certain things that were lost. And right. now it's being reawakened to right. actually have the knowledge and the truth. So they're just waking right. up now right. and now line upon line, precept upon precept. Right. It's coming into the fullness of the truth of the the Hebrew Israel. Now, right. essentially, right. all of that, that whole history from 70 AD to early uh, 20 uh, or late 20th century. Mm -hmm. All of that is pagan. Right. That's that's pagan Christianity. The truth of uh, the uh, biblical faith is only just now coming to fruition through okay. them. And so so going back to the person of Jesus and their view of who Jesus Christ is. So Jesus Christ was a black man. Mm. Uh, he was a God, and he's a God to be revered, but not one to be specifically worshipped. Right. They would say um, he's the son of God, but yeah. he is not God himself. Okay. So, but would he, in a sense, would they believe in the incarnation? Is that there was a God who is fully God or fully man? Or would they, what do they believe about that and the virgin birth and right. Mary? They wouldn't say, I, I think they would reject saying that he's fully God. They wouldn't use the, the term God with him, right? Okay. If you press them, then they'll say, okay, he's a God. But that's after pressing them. Originally, they would just say he is uh, he's the son of God. And that's the distinction that they'll make. Uh, he's the word of God, but that's not God himself. Right. So they would they would they would only use that term God if they were pressed on it. So Pastor James presses him on it. Mm -hmm. Right. And he eventually says, well, he is a God, but he is not the God. Mm -hmm. You know, same with the Holy Spirit. They would say the Holy Spirit is a, a feminine counterpart of the masculine father. And the same mm -hmm. thing, a kind of a God, a power is really the term that they use power. Right. Um, a power, but not the original source. And he even said, and after I watched this again, I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't even pay attention to this the first time. He even said that Christ was created, right? That there was a time that Christ didn't exist. Yeah. yeah. So that would give some that. insight as to why they believe what they believe. Right? So, so quick question for you. So it's going to come to a surprise to many people, but I'm a white guy. <laughs> but anyways, uh, say, say I'm listening to the Hebrew Israelites, right? right? The Masonic ones from the GOCC. And right. all of a sudden I'm, I'm believing what they say. Right. Uh, what, what, how is salvation offered to me? Right. right. So since Jesus is a God, not God, right. Is there, um, an aspect to where salvation can't really fully be for all peoples when, uh, specifically, it's for certain tribes. Like there's a continuity that they're breathing from the old Testament into the new Testament mm -hmm. in terms of skin color and tribe. It's like, how would it work for me as a white man? If all of a sudden I wanted to be part of the GOCC. Right. So they would say that salva there's a hierarchy in salvation, right? Okay. It's not that other people in some groups, some groups would say no other people outside of Israelites will be saved. Okay. Right. Um, but GOCC in particular, there's a hierarchy. So they'll say, Christ only came for Israel, and they'll point to the scripture when Christ says, "Only come for the lost sheep, the lost sheep of the house of Israel." Right? They'll say, "Look, this, he said it right there," and totally negate Matthew. Uh, right? You know, Matthew twenty-eight when he says, "Go out and make disciples of all the nations." Sheep not of this fold as well. Right? Yeah. Right? Exactly. Many, many, many yeah, scriptures. Right? Um, but they would say Christ came for Israel, right? And that Israel is going to be made into a nation of kings and priests. And this gets into the eschatology. They say when Christ comes back, he's going to rule for a thousand years. Israel will rule, rule with him, reign with him as kings and priests, mm -hmm. and that all other nations of people who are saved 
will be servants mm. in that a thousand year, uh, that, that, that millennial reign. So they have a greater salvation. Then. Greater salvation. Interesting. Exactly. Yeah. And they will say, we served here, right? We served in this, in this world, and therefore all Gentiles are going to serve us in the mm -hmm. next world. Right. Wow. Yeah. And okay. so when you talk about them being kings and priests, is, is that sort of carry over to why they wear? We, we, we made a post on our social media, and usually if you type in Hebrew Israelites or black Hebrew Israelites on, and in the Google search bar, yeah. especially go to images, you'll see all sorts of very... Yeah, elaborate, yeah. colorful garb that that plays into that. Then absolutely, that plays into that as well as to them just trying to get back to uh, uh, the original uh, clothing. And it gets really out there. There's nothing about it that's original, but they get you know they look like Power Rangers out there. So, so another another question. I think it begs the question. I think listeners would be thinking this too. So for the non messianic groups, um, what about the sacrificial system? What about the Levitical priesthood? What yeah. about um the the temple? What about all of those things? Right, right, are, right. What's and, going and, on with that? I, I'm not really sure about that. That's been my question to actual Jewish people as well. Is right. If you don't believe in Christ and in his ultimate fulfillment in the sacrifice, yeah, there's no temple. You can't sacrifice. I'm, I'm not really sure how, how they reconcile that. Mm -hmm. Because once the temple falls, you can't keep these commandments. It's yeah. impossible. You know, so I'm not exactly sure what they do in that regard and, and, and how they kind of feel like and they are in good standing with the Lord if they're not obeying those laws. You'd mm -hmm. think you'd have to trace back your Levitical priesthood. Right. You'd have to follow the, the same laws that were given to Moses. Yeah, I'm not I'm not totally sure it's about that. It's an interesting it thing is. to think about. They, it is. they have to do something with it, you'd right, think. Right, right. They have to make sense of it somehow. Oh, oh wait, okay, maybe, maybe it goes back to like you were telling us uh, earlier, which maybe you can talk about this, in terms of the chart that says which tribe they are from. Maybe they use something like that to say right. this sect of people right here right. comes from this And tribe. that is Masonic ones though. Oh, okay, not that's not ones. non use that. Wow. Right, okay. right, so. Talk um, about that then. Masonic, um, um, Hebrew Israelites, they will have a chart and they'll say like, uh, black people are from Judah, Puerto Rican people are from Ephraim, Cuban people are from NASA, um, Pacific Islanders are Naphtali. Uh, and they go through these 12 tribes and they point to specific people in the world today and, and how they, uh, fit into this, to this, you know, this tribal system. Um, and they, then they go to Genesis 49 and try to make sense of it. Um, uh, Mexican people are Issachar. Um, and they will say that white people are Edomites. Mm. which will kind of explain this tension between what they would say, this tension between black and white people, like slavery and all of that. They'll yeah. say that points to the tension between Esau and Jacob in the Bible and how this has always been that same tension. It's never gone anywhere. Yeah. Even throughout their posterity, they're still upholding that same tension. You know, mm. Believing that uh, Jacob stole the birthright and Edomite is mad about it. And so he's suppressing <laughs> right. him throughout yeah. all of history. He's suppressing him for that same thing. No, oh. I feel like this. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm. I'm sort of going down the very ed, the educational rabbit hole right, of right, right. all things Hebrew Israelites. Right. This is right. fascinating, man. Um, so another thing too is that so they do believe Jesus died on a cross, right? And do they believe in the resurrection that yeah. he rose from the dead three days later? Yeah, they believe. Uh, they do believe that, but then they don't. Be, they don't believe in Sunday worship. Right. Right. They. They. They hold to the sabbath so though he so they would believe it they worship on saturday similar to seventh day adventists right, right. sunday's a pagan day to worship right. that's when the nimrodian religions worshiped absolutely okay worship that's what that's their claim I don't yeah. Believe that. yeah 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 but what it, so i mean we're gonna go we have any really we've kind of sort of elaborated a little bit of their of their idea of salvation mm. but what do they believe was accomplished on the cross when christ went there i mean as christians we would have the answer for that but in right. regards to defining defining terms right when jesus christ goes to the cross he dies in the accounts of all the gospels. If I'm talking, if I just go, if we, if I went out tomorrow and they're out of Mill Avenue over here and they're talking, and I bring mm. up, start talking about Christ crucified. W what's the mindset of someone like that? You were for 10 years. Right. This, well, this is interesting. One is election. They believe in election, but that election is Israel. Right. Right. That is God's elect are uh, Israelites. That's one. Number two, um, when it comes to, the death and resurrection of Christ, what's interesting is that their gospel, when they're out proselytizing, they're not preaching the gospel. They're not preaching Christ died for your sins. Mm. You're a sinner before holy God, you know, repent and believe. That's not their gospel. Their gospel is, who is your father? These nation, these nations of people are the original uh, people of Israel. Return to the law so that you might be saved. Wow. Right. Mm. That's their gospel. The, the gospel you're going to get to Christ. They talk about Christ, it'll be later. Mm -hmm. It won't be in that original spill that they give you, right? Wow. So Christ dying on the cross and resurrecting, right, and his death being for the remission of sins. What's interesting about that is there's no talk of regeneration, right? There's no talk of dying to self. 
and living in Christ, they, they don't talk like that. They don't feel like they need to die to themselves, right? They feel like they need to be restored to their former glory, mm. right? So Christ dies and they believe him to be a savior. But again, pri that is primarily for Israel, only secondarily for anyone else, mm -hmm. right? But there's no, they don't really dig into that though, right? Really the gospel is who you are, your bloodline, even though the Bible tells us not to strive in genealogy. That's what right. they strive for. Wow. Mm, yeah. So in other words, that Christ, in, in their worldview, is that Christ died in order to give them their, uh, bring family. them back to their origin, their true identity right. as, a, as a true Israelite. Absolutely. And, and the breaking of the covenant that took place, that's what he died for. Only the breaking of the, they, they would say the covenant is with Israel, and therefore only Israel needs mm -hmm. a savior. Because the law is only given to Israel, so Israel b right. broke the covenant, and so Christ only came for those who broke that covenant. Oh, okay, so just a quick question too: uh, which which covenant are we talking about uh, in terms of the covenant that was broken when when Moses leads the Israelites out of Egypt and they're about to go into the Promised Land Mosaic and then they send covenant. out? Okay, they right. they send out the spies and then they're right. scared and they want to go back. That's there's the covenant. No, right. There's no oh, okay. thought of like uh, an Adamic covenant. There's no thought of a, a covenant of works prior to Moses. They don't. They don't deal with that. That's why that book was so interesting that we were reading and you heard the questions I was asking. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because that's digging into covenant theology and they have no concept of that. Right? Okay. They don't have an understanding that there is a a broken covenant prior to Moses. Okay. Right. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what it comes down to. Now, <clears throat> as you said earlier, both uh, Andrew and I, we are as, uh, I think we're as about as Edomite as you can get. <laughs> 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 right. Yeah. So, but... It, it, but when it comes to the, th the theology wise, like I would be viewed as an Edomite. So when mm. it comes to Christ, uh, the, the Christ of the Hebrew Israelites, this false Christ, and he's there to give their identity as the, as the, as being part of the, these authentic true Hebrew Israelites mm. or the or true Israelites. But here we are out really Edomites or even gen Gentiles right. or really almost how Jews would, be, would view Samaritans Absolutely. Uh, back in the in, in uh, New Testament times. That's actually what they would point to. Yeah. By the way, that's what they would, I would be. A, I would also be a Samaritan. I would be a you Samaritan. You wouldn't be a Samaritan, but the way they will say, look, look, Christ called her a dog, right? And that kind of mm. goes into the, the verbiage that they use for Gentiles. If you remember during that conversation that Ricard has with, with Pastor James, he kept saying Gentile, Gent very derogatory. He meant it yeah. in a derogatory way, yeah. you know, so... Yeah, that would kind of go into that language and, and kind of this this overall view of Edomites mm -hmm. as as an enemy of yeah. the nation of Israel. Yeah, and so can can I as an Edomite be saved? Only if you acknowledge that I am an Israelite and you come under subjection to me as an authority. Hmm. Yeah. That's a... Otherwise, yeah, that's... you're living a lie and, and when Christ comes back, he's going to come to save Israel and exact punishment on all those people who mm -hmm. did not acknowledge you know, who the people were and come under that subjection. Yeah. So here's, here's what's interesting too, is that I remember, you know, one of the things that I love when Pastor James talks about the, how the early Christians, when they shared the Lord's Supper together, mm -hmm. that you had people from, you think about like the movie characters, you would have had like Maximus, right. you know, Leonidas, right, right. Uh, like Ragnar Lothbrok, like the pagan, right, right. like Nordic Viking, right. like all these people there, all this tribalism where they were, you know, they all did terrible things to each other, yeah. but they are all, they are seen all equals under the table of Christ. It seems that, however, that even if I was, this is just my conjecture, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems that if I were to agree to the terms, uh, sign the contract and make myself in subjugation to that, I, even with my acknowledgement of that and that now being my identity, we still wouldn't be seen as equals. No. I would be seen still, even with, with full submission, I would, I, would be, I would be seen in subjugation due to the color of my skin, correct? Right. You could never teach. You could never have any type of authoritative position in, in, the, in the congregation of the church. There would be no equality in that sense. Mm. You, you, could, you could partake, um, but you could never, you know, uh, be in any, you know, any eldership or deacon. You, you could never do that. It's almost like you're in preparation to serve. Exactly. When salvation is, w when the millennial reign occurs. Absolutely. Um, I have a question. So what, what does the GOCC, just because we're speaking Masonic <laughs> camp, specifically what do they do with the letters of paul like for example because it seems like well i know that they, re they they read the old testament into the news so there's right. probably a lens they interpret paul through but it's hard to to <laughs> read paul any differently right. like in ephesians 3 he talks about the mystery of christ i'm just going to read it real quick and, it. and put your uh, black hebrew israel lens you. on right it says when you read this you can perceive my insight into the mystery of christ 
which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promised in Jesus, Christ Jesus through the gospel of this gospel as made a minister according to the gifts of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. Right. Same body. Right. Same body. Okay. Now I'm, I'm going to tell you what they do with this. Okay. They would consider almost all of the references to Gentiles in the epistles, in the New Testament, to be Israelites that had fallen away, that have been, that have been, um, huh. um, you know, they've, they've, they've merged into these other cultures. Oh, okay. So Hellenistic. Hellenistic Hellenistic Jews. Jews. Exactly. Okay. So that they're Gentiles wow. according to the flesh, right? And so that they need to wow. be reawakened okay. <laughs> so they're not, to the truth they're of their identity. So they're not spiritual Gentiles. They're no. just Gentiles of the flesh. Right. They're, they're, okay. they're not actually Gentiles, but they live like Gentiles. And so okay. therefore, the, the, the epistles are addressing these people who are actually Jews but are living like Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a stretch, but okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. They, yeah. That's what. That's their answer. That's how they yeah. make sense of it. All right, so I got a question to you. You're, yeah. you're reading from Ephesians. I was thinking about how they, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to grasp the mindset of how they think. You know, you say a word, I'm going to think of one thing, like Paul, a bondservant of Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Immediately the idea of bondservants, even the slavery that's mentioned in the New Testament, they're going to have a different way they view it. So I mean, you look at like Philemon, mm. like that story. Like <laughs> how, how, like how does a Hebrew Israelite? Would you look at something like Philemon, and did you have a mindset and how you'd interpret that when you're in the Hebrew Israelite? So what did that look like? You mean as far as are you saying as far as like history goes and the way that they view like slavery? Yeah, but also just when in the New Testament, when mm. it, when just the the terms and verbiage, and you also when you have this all of Philemon is regarding someone who is a slave, right? right? But then you also, you have the terms, you know, a slave of Christ, I you know, you. slaves of sin, slaves of Christ. Right. I'm trying to think of like, that would be a word that a Hebrew Israelite, if I'm having a discussion with them, they're going to view that very differently right. versus myself who would view that. They're not going to have a whole lot. They're, they're not going to speak about that too okay. much as far as being slaves of Christ, but um, they would acknowledge that Christ is a king. But they would more so look at themselves as, you know, what the scripture says, fellow heirs. Fellow heirs, yeah. Right. But but the word slave, they're not going to really look at themselves in that way. You know, there's a there's a there's a a lot of baggage that comes with that word, right. especially for black people. And mm -hmm. so that's something oh, that they're sure. going to stay away from. Right? Yeah. But again, when it comes down, they would look at that and probably um, look at a means by which they're going to rule over other nations, and they'll say we're not going to be bad masters, right? So slavery is not going to be bad for the Gentiles that are in the millennial reign, right? Because we're going to be good masters, mm. right? So they mm. would say it would be different from slavery that had taken place throughout history, especially the transatlantic slave trade. You know? Wow. So they take verses like uh, in Colossians chapter four, masters, treat your bond servants justly and fairly, knowing that you mm. also have a master in heaven. Right. They're like, why yeah. will? Right, exactly. <laughs> they'll, say, they'll say the people that had us enslaved, they did not. But when Christ returns, we will. Right. So in other words, they will, they will, rule over the Edomites, but they're going to rule over in a just way mm -hmm. versus the unjust way right. via, the, via, via, the, okay, right. via the slave trade. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot, there's, I mean, there's, there's so much to unravel here. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of where, of where to jump from here. So you, you obviously grew up in this and there was a while where I don't know. Do you have any unique stories of when you went out to evangelize or just some interactions? I mean, mm -hmm. just give me some examples of what that was like. Yeah. So evangelizing on the street, um, you know, out there with a Bible and someone's saying, read. And then another person is yelling and, you know, yeah. I, I've done all of that. You know, I've done all of that. And um, I mean, I don't think I have any stories per se um, in particular, but just the means, the thing that always caught my attention uh, regarding that is just how how prevalent they are in doing so, right? And how, what it's doing is if people don't have a proper understanding of the gospel, right? Again, it's filling a void. So so I would say uh, black people, when they look at slavery and they look at civil rights movement and things yeah. like that, they'll say, okay, the people who are teaching me the Bible are not making sense of this event in history, right? They're not, they're not, um, they're not touching on these topics to bring clarity as to why this might've happened, mm -hmm. right? So this... There was a there's actually a, a a rapper who who was a Christian and who had just recently he had uh, acknowledged himself to be a black Hebrew Israelite. I think hmm. I, what's the guy's name? I think I think I've heard of him in passing. Um, his name is uh, Ishan Burgundy. Do, do you know? Him? Yes, I've Ishan heard. Yeah, Burgundy, yeah, right? yeah. And he's just full blown going to, 
you know, Hebrew Israelite theology. Now, um, I think a huge part of that, a huge part of that is not understanding God's sovereignty. They have no concept of Calvinism at all. Right. right? Um, so when we look at God's sovereignty and we see that all things are working together, you know, for those who are called according to his purpose, you know, there's not a concept of that. And, it's, and part of that is because they have, they have uh, compartmentalized who the elect of God is. Right. So it can't, it can't encompass all of these things that are happening throughout world history only to them. And so because that's the question that needs to be answered, why are these things happening? Why are these people in, in a certain kind of position? This comes and gives a quick, easy answer for them. And it doesn't, they don't have to leave the Bible in order to get clarity on it, right? A lot of black people in America, they grow up on the Bible, mm-hmm. right? Um, and what you have in like the 90s is, or, or the 60s up until the 90s yeah. is black Muslims, right? But it's getting you away from the Bible, right? Hebrew Israelites, why I think this false gospel is so dangerous is because they're like, no, keep your Bible. We're just going to tell you how to understand it. Mm-hmm. You already got a Bible. Yeah. Right. Now you are the people of the Bible. You are the people of this book. This is what gives you this proud. This gives you this identity. Right. And it and it and it turns the scriptures into a means of puffing you up. Right. Wow. Instead of instead of uplifting Christ, you know, the, the holiness of God, the, the your the sinfulness of your sin and the sufficiency of Christ is all about puffing you up now. Right. You that, that's what I was just kind of thinking in my head was there's got to be. The concept of sin must be something that's not really grasped grasped very well. It's more of like uh, looking through the lens of your DNA, right? Not necessarily equality through s- sin. Like right. we're all sinners, you right. know. We we fell through Adam and Eve, so therefore we're all related at the right, core right. by Adam and Eve. No, that's and not. And God concept. just chose a group of people, the Israelites, to why? Because He's sovereign, and that's who, where the Messiah was going to come from, who mm-hmm. then unites all people through the blood of Jesus Christ going back to this Adam and Eve like state. Right. Right. right? Like but there's none of that. No, no. You have this federalism in Adam mm-hmm. and how all men fall in Adam. Right. And there's a distinction in that. They don't understand that all are dead in Adam. Right. They, they don't get that. So that when Christ comes and he says, you know, through one man, death came and through another, you know, this, the salvation is coming through Christ. There's a total lack of understanding there. Right. Mm-hmm. And again, it's, it's because they're not pointing back to original sin. They're looking at Moses as really the part that that Mosaic covenant is where sin really becomes what it is, right? Not Adam. Hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So, so are they? Would they? Would they say they're sinners after they, um, you know, after the the messianic group? Mm-hmm. Would, they're saved by Christ, let's say, but would they say they're still sinners in need of God and His? They wouldn't say necessarily God, but a God in the sacrifice, right? Well, what they what, would say. This is interesting, too, because this okay. differs for some groups. Some groups will tell you, like when I was out evangelizing and I ran into that group, they would, one guy told me he hadn't sinned in three years. Okay. I haven't sinned in three years. And, and this is based off of uh, what they read in the law, right? Now, uh, a greater understanding of what sin is and when Christ is getting into it, the heart of the matter, you know, mm-hmm. all of these issues, they flaw to the heart. There's no real concept of that, okay. right? Uh, sin down to the to the to the core down to the heart the heart is the problem we need a new one mm-hmm. right it's more so outward workings of the law that would det- that will determine you to be righteous or a sinner mm-hmm. right so you could have been a sinner in the past but you could be you know free from sin for for quite a while you mm-hmm. know until you maybe fall again and then and then yeah. it's, it's really like it's like i do it until until i fall short and then christ does the rest mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right christ is plan b okay right when mm-hmm. i can't be righteous in and of myself Christ, you know, I tag him in at that point. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. And there's definitely, I mean, this is also, I think, one of the things when you're talking just about where it is just even culturally right now, I just think the appeal of Hebrew Israelites, especially because, I mean, where it means, especially if you watch the news, even with, with things that happened in 2020, uh, I mean, I'm, I can only imagine with how they would perceive and would use something like the murder of George, George Floyd um, and just seeing how they would use that to give continue to propagate their idea Absolutely. of the Hebrew Israelite gospel. And again, that whole story of George Floyd is very important to have a discussion, like what does real authentic justice look like for that? Mm-hmm. And I was just thinking, I just, I was reminded of that because I believe the trial for the police officer it's or police right officers. Yeah, it just, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's going on right now. So that, that's just an example too. Like you have historically cults uh, have, gone and taken advantage of times of uncertainty uh you know one of our very first episodes we ever did was on jim jones okay that he was all about 
he was very prominent and kind of really used a lot was of what was going on in the civil rights movement, the civil right. rights era to really advocate for his idea of social justice, Absolutely, which is just one of those things when you have an idea of justice dealing with raw image bears of gods, we look at, we look at all these problems going on. Like these are real yeah. problems that need, that need the gospel that need to be fixed. Right. But then you have something that is just uh you have someone taking advantage of it and, and slipping in right. a false gospel that's poisonous and dangerous. Right. Um, so yeah, in many ways, it's very, it's very important to, d- to deal with that for sure. So uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, we're going to go and wrap up part one. I feel like we did a broad overview, so yeah. maybe we're going to go a little more in deep because really that was part of your life for eight and a half years. Mm. You eventually got out and there was things that, and maybe because a lot of people wanting to know how to answer their different claims, but mm. those answers, I think, were part of the process of you yeah. leaving. Absolutely. So we'll talk about that and whatever else comes to our mind. So uh, this is part one of a very uh, a sky overview. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is the drone cam. Yeah, there's so much of it. <laughs> yeah. There's so much. I always think like their theology is like a mile long. Yes. It's this deep. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not very deep, but it's but it's a lot to, to overlook. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, if you guys enjoyed the first part of this episode, this uh, really kind of focused on an overview, really a sky overview of the Hebrew Israelites. Definitely uh, sh- share on our social media. Uh, leave us a comment. Let us know what you liked. And definitely appreciate you supporting Cultish. And as always, this program cannot continue without your support. So if you feel led to donate and allow conversations like this to be a part of your everyday Tuesday, go to the cultishshow.com. You can go to the donate tab. You can donate one time. And, or monthly, and if you choose to do so, thank you so much for that, and we're very blessed by, th- by that. So, all that being said, we'll talk to you guys in part two, where we uh, t- talked about the Hebrew Israelites, and yeah, talk to you guys soon.